Welcome to Science on the Sphere at Nauticus. Science on the Sphere was developed by NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, to better illustrate Earth system science on its native format, a sphere. Earth system science is comprised of several systems or spheres working together to create a complex and dynamic system. Today, we will discuss the atmosphere, or air, the hydrosphere, or water, the geosphere, or land, and the biosphere, or life. Let us begin our journey by gazing upon Nauticus from above. As we zoom out, we see Norfolk's living seaport, ships on the water surface, the Elizabeth River's abundant life below, and the vibrant maritime city on its banks. As we zoom out and gaze upon the Chesapeake Bay, we see one of the most important watersheds in the world home to over 17 million people and a seemingly endless number of animal species. Zooming out even more, we see Earth from over 22,000 miles away. It is here that our journey begins. How do we know what Earth looks like from space? Among their many duties, satellites are able to scan the Earth and provide imagery of the Earth as seen from space. Here, we see a polar orbiting satellite scanning the Earth and transmitting the imagery onto the sphere. Other types of satellites include geostationary satellites, which are generally always above the same spot of the Earth. Besides weather and cloud information, satellites can also provide us with data regarding ocean temperatures, sea ice concentration, and much more. Now that we can see the Earth, let us begin with the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the blanket of air or gases that surround the Earth. The primary gases that make up the atmosphere are nitrogen and oxygen. While the atmosphere extends almost 400 miles above the Earth's surface, the 10 miles closest to the surface are the most active, and this is where the weather occurs. You are now looking at near real-time infrared satellite imagery. The loop starts about a week ago and ends with near current data. The brighter the clouds, the higher they are in the atmosphere. Thick, high clouds are typically those that produce precipitation. Now, try to find Norfolk or your hometown and see what the weather is like. Now let us move down a layer and explore the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere includes all water on Earth, whether it be in rivers, oceans, groundwater, or even frozen. Over 70% of the Earth is covered in water. However, only 3% of Earth's water is fresh water, and the majority of that is currently frozen in glaciers. Here, we see major ocean currents around the world. An ocean current is a continuous movement of water. Currents are created by wind, gravity, or differences in temperature and salt. The colors of the globe show different speeds. Blue areas are slow-moving currents, green areas are faster, and yellows and reds are moving even faster. Ocean currents bring warm water to the poles and cold water to the equator. These warm and cold currents have huge impacts on local and global climates and balance Earth's overall temperature. Our next layer of the Earth is the geosphere. The geosphere includes a metallic core, solid and molten rock, soil, and sediments. We are now looking at the Earth without the sea and without the atmosphere. Not only do we see the topography of the Earth, including mountains and deserts, but also that the ocean floor is not simply a flat terrain. In fact, the world's largest mountain chain, the Mid-Ocean Ridge System, is found on the ocean floor. The deepest point on Earth, the Mariana Trench, can also be found in the Pacific Ocean near Japan. Lastly, with this image, we are better able to see the continental shelf and slope along several coastlines. So far, we have explored the atmosphere, hydrosphere, and geosphere. 
The last layer is the biosphere. The biosphere includes Earth's life, which may be found in any of the other spheres. This first look at the biosphere shows plant activity on land and phytoplankton activity in the oceans, providing insight into which areas of the Earth are biologically active. Now let us take another look at the biosphere. We are gazing upon the Earth at night. We see all of the man-made lights on the Earth. Humans are an important part of the biosphere, and our activities have a major impact on all four of Earth's spheres. Some interesting things to note here are highway systems, population density near the coastlines, the Nile River, North and South Korea, and the darkness over much of Africa. Now that we have explored the four major spheres, or systems, of the Earth, we need to look at the Sun. The Sun needs to be considered when discussing Earth as a system because it provides heat, light, and energy to the Earth. The Sun heats the atmosphere and oceans, provides energy for photosynthesis to plants, and along with Earth's rotation and tilt, provides us with daily and seasonal cycles of climate. Now, let's explore how some of these spheres interact with each other and the sun. Here, we are looking at sea surface temperatures for one year. As the sun heats the atmosphere, the earth warms, allowing oceans, the hydrosphere, to warm as well. However, the entire earth isn't heated the same. We have warmer water near the equator and cooler water near the poles. We can also see a change in seasons. The warm water migrates north for summer in the northern hemisphere and south for summer in the southern hemisphere. The water itself, the hydrosphere, can then impact weather patterns like hurricanes as they need warm water as fuel. And that brings us back to the atmosphere. One really great example of Earth's systems interacting is a tsunami. This amazing animation shows wave energy associated with the Indian Ocean tsunami in December 2004. A 9.3 magnitude earthquake, geosphere, occurred underwater sending very high waves, hydrosphere, onto the shores, geosphere, of Sumatra and other locations around the Indian Ocean. The massive waves and debris impacted the lives of thousands, biosphere. Feel free to walk around the sphere and notice how the waves, though small, travel around the entire Earth. Earth. It looks so peaceful floating in space, doesn't it? Today, however, we have learned just how complex the Earth is from gaining energy from the sun to the ever-changing weather patterns. We've also seen the interaction of life on Earth with all of the other parts of Earth, including the ocean floors, oceans, and atmosphere. The Earth may look simple and peaceful in space, but we now know our always active Earth is defined by the right combination of air, water, land, and life. This now concludes your program at Science on the Sphere. Please enjoy the rest of your day here at Nauticus on the downtown Norfolk waterfront.